Good day, my rocket friends. Today we're going to be demonstrating the assembly of an Aerotech 38 millimeter propellant kit, uh, installing that into an Aerotech 38 millimeter um, hardware set that we have here, and furthermore, demonstration of how to utilize uh, the Aerotech RAS. Um, system here which is really honestly quite quite nice a lot of people um, shy away from it but it really again allows you to um, save money by buying less casings and utilizing a larger range of impulse uh, propellant kits available for these uh, with just this kit right here and we'll show you how that works uh, so without further ado we'll crack this thing open and get building All right guys, here we are all unpacked and we'll quickly go over the parts included with this Aerotech I-180 reload and what's unique about it. Um, you probably quickly notice these half grain propellant sizes, which is a little odd, but that keeps it uh, hazmat free, saves you that $45 uh, or whatever that, that those costs are um, associated with most of, I think, I believe all the other 38 millimeter um, reload kits available. So kind of nice for this one, but also looks a little strange. But um, anyways, we have our uh, propellant sleeve here. This is where the delay grains will live and uh, protect your uh, casing. Um, obviously our six grains here for this I-180, our forward and aft seal discs here, which um, take note actually, because certain reload kits will use this uh, machined aluminum. Uh, seal disc version uh, and depending on the propellant load might use this instead of um, these kind of uh, fiber uh, seal discs so pay close attention uh, we have our aft and forward o-rings we have our delay grain sleeve here and the delay grain itself um, the forward neoprene delay uh, I think they call it a spacer but it's also kind of a seal disc um, and then the delay o-ring here and then this little guy um, is the delay spacer which can actually make or break your flight uh, the wands and the kens know what this does now uh, maybe i'll show you a clip of what happens if you invert this assembly um, <laughs> love you guys don't worry we have the aft um, nozzle here of course our starter and black powder if you're running motor eject and a little uh, white sticker uh, to help seal um, the black powder in here once it's all ready to go. Personally, I used to use masking tape, but this works as well. Uh, and then little caps uh, to hold the igniter in on the nozzle side. Um, and then the injection charge if you're using a standard uh, one-piece forward closure. So without further ado, we'll get assembling. All right, guys. So like most Aerotech reloads, if you haven't built one already, they'll ask you to apply a thin coat of synthetic grease over all the O-rings. Um, just enough to create a sheen on there. This helps with their sealing properties needed for the excessive case pressure that they'll experience. Um, so pretty simple. Here, all I have to do is get just a little bit of a glob on your finger, like so, and just do a quick, nice massaging of grease over all the O-rings. We'll quickly get these done. All right, from here we're simply going to insert all the grains into this uh, liner sleeve here. Pretty straightforward. Just tuck these in one at a time. On a typical 360 reload, you'll really only see three grains. Again, these are all cut in half. I have to say I have hazmat fees, but concept's the same. And the instructions will then ask you to um, recess this in uh, equally to um, your case. But because here we're going to be using the RAS system, um, it can be offset uh, to one side or the other, um, in which the other uh, spacer here will compensate, make up that difference. So simply insert that in like so, followed by your forward and aft seal discs. 
Um, they'll be kind of loose in there for now, that's okay. Um, literally, they'll just kind of drop in there. Uh, once we start cinching this thing all down, it will it'll make a little more sense. So once we have that, uh, our propellant liner and grains installed and the forward and aft seal discs installed, they might be kind of loose in there. So I just like to kind of uh, gently set this aside in a horizontal manner. Um, and then from here, we'll start assembling um, the forward closures. And again, um, if you're not using an RAS system, the one piece forward closure works just fine. Um, in our case, we're going to be using the two piece forward closure so I can be running the 360 reload in the 480 case. <clears throat> now, you can use this um, without the RAS. This is not dependent or specific to the RAS kit. Uh, so, from here, um, I just like taking a small dab of this grease here, put a thin liner coat inside this to help clean up and also enhance the sealing properties um, just to a small degree. Um, and then this is where, if we're flying motor eject, we'll want to cut our delay grain. Uh, for this particular rocket, it's a lock four inch goblin, do your own simulations, but um, I need an eight second delay out of this. This is a 14 second delay as it is. Um, so to get to eight seconds, I need to cut six off of it. Uh, and to do so, I'll be using um, the RMS delay drilling tool. There's an eight second cut end and a four second cut end with a washer that equals two seconds. So of course, I'm gonna use the two second washer on the eight second end to create a six, or sorry, eight, 14 minus six is eight. Um, so all I'll do here is insert this into the eight second uh, port here and slowly start drilling down and twisting until this bottoms out. Okay, make sure you dispose of that correctly. Uh, and then here we have a six second cut uh, from our 14 second delay grain. Uh, and then from here, we'll go ahead and just quickly chamfer one end of the delay grain sleeve. We'll insert this delay grain and a delay spacer on the side that you did the cut. Now this is pretty critical. If you get this backwards, you're gonna have problems. Um, so we have the, the um, reduced delay side with the delay spacer, and this is gonna face the propellant end um, of the motor. Uh, so from here, I'll just go ahead and put the delay O-ring over this little lip. Careful not to get any grease on the uh, delay itself. Um, we'll take the forward closure, insert that neoprene spacer there, tuck that down in there, make sure it sits nice and flush, uh, and then install this delay um, assembly with the solid delay grain facing forward and the spacer and drilled side facing uh, the propellant grain itself. So here we're just going to tuck this in there nicely. Sits nice and flush, nice and tight. There you have it. This completes the forward closure assembly. Okay, and here's the part where it starts getting a little bit tricky. And the reason why I say that, since we're using the RAS kit, this forward closure is gonna be recessed down into the case just a little bit of the ways. Um, so now's the time, um, which isn't really ideal, but it is what it is with this kit, is to fill this with the recommended black powder that you need. Um, for that ejection charge and then sealing it with this sticker cap. For this video, I'm not gonna be filling this right now, um, but you could do it with one spacer. It's just gonna be a little bit more tricky as it's recessed down in there. If you're using two spacers, in this example, I have a 480 case, I could fly a 240 propellant reload. You might wanna build it from the bottom up, which uh, I'm not showing you here, but um, uh, so I teach their own on that one. But from here, we're gonna be taking the forward O-ring. The aft O-ring is the thicker of the two here. So I'm gonna take this forward O-ring, push this down in there against that um, inside seal disc. Kind of hard to see, you just got to trust me. Um, and then um, our forward closure, again, make sure you have your black powder charge filled. We're gonna tuck this down inside until it kind of sits in your O-ring there. And you can kind of feel it kind of snap in a little bit. And then you'll take one of those RAS sleeves, um, which is a, resembling a grain. We're gonna slide this down in there. 
push this down to where it needs to go and then use the forward closure um, part right here to lock this guy down. Okay, there you have it. It's a little hard to see with this lighting here. I need to work on that. Um, and then from the back side, We'll go ahead and turn this around um, and insert the larger of those two O-rings, the aft O-ring, into the back end of the motor. Make sure that's seated all the way down in there. Okay. Then the nozzle itself. We'll tuck this in. It kind of snaps in place. You'll feel it kind of click. And then finally, the aft closure itself. One thing I didn't mention is it's a good idea to put um, some of that synthetic uh, grease on the inside threads here. Obviously these get quite hot and helps with cleanup, removal, and disassembly uh, post-flight. I kind of do that as a habitual item once I'm done flying them, so I forget to mention that in these videos. So get them nice and tight. Um, and there you have it. Um, a motor that's ready to go beat um, whoever I want in a lock goblin drag race. Maybe I'll show you a clip here at the end. Um, the one other thing uh, is kind of cool. These caps are designed to hold your igniter in. Um, so what I like to do is put a little slice in there just to help vent um, the igniter once it starts coming to pressure. Um, and then you're off to the races. There you have it all. Fly safe, enjoy, and have a great day. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. That was so cool. Oh, blue got treed. <laughs> <laughs>